Yeah, I, I had to I had to switch to different speaker source. <laughs> Technology, you're a whore. <laughs> <laughs> that's always been my that, you can quote me on that <laughs> all right i'm telling you <laughs> yeah I, I mean, I, you a whore. yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I'll, I, be <laughs> he'll be on my grave so <laughs> no i wanted <laughs> we'll, we'll see that's what i want on my tomb so we'll see dot 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 you know that's my, that's my epitaph we'll see <laughs> <laughs> every, every, every great idea. I got the best idea in the world. You wait till you hear it. Oh, yeah, yeah, we'll see. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see if it's good or not. Yeah, yeah, I've heard them all twice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and as you can see, I'm wearing, showing my support to the Mortal Kombat. Oh, oh awesome. Yeah, it's facing the wrong way. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah let's, let's talk about that first off. Oh, there you go. Yeah, me... <laughs> I'm going to flip it around for me. <laughs> What's the backside look like? Is that a, or is that just flat? Let's see. Oh, oh, there you go. Oh, perfect. Oh, see? Somebody knew what they were doing. Yeah. Well, maybe it's okay on your end, but um, on my end, it's reversed. Well, I don't know what you call reverse, facing left or facing right. I mean, like the mirror... Like, um, this is supposed to say, like, 27th Brigade Combat Team. I'm yeah, that's, it's, it's right reading, so yours is facing the correct way. Let me tell you why, okay? Okay. Uh, uh, M MK1, mm -hmm. I did the artwork. I did the, the Dragon logo when I illustrated it facing left. Uh. And and at the very end, and if you look at MK1, all the dragons are facing left, except for the side ones, you know, where they're facing out. That's that that's obviously they're facing toward the front. But the the when the dragons are appearing by themselves, they face left. Okay. Mm -hmm. So that at the end of the game, when we had done all the artwork and all the production was done, and we had our final sign-off meeting, um, mm -hmm. I I said to Ed Boone. Um, uh, hey, I, I tried to, you know, I stayed true to the Kung Fu fighting symbol and it's facing left. And interestingly enough, uh, just, just recently I read that the Romans believed our sinister nature was on our left side. And then there was like this long, uncomfortable pause and Ed goes, oh, you've really given us a lot of thought, haven't you? Mm -hmm. And I went, mainly because, um, mm -hmm. Read left to right, and um, so after that, oh, yeah, but after that conversation, it's been facing right ever since, yeah. So, there you go. Yeah. Um, my, my lawyer told me that it was probably because they wanted to, because I was a freelancer, I, I still had some sketchy possible rights to it that I would mm -hmm. never exercise. I had no intention of going up against a you know mega corporation, that'd be just stupid. You know, I, I know, but they felt obligated to, you know, kind of throw the fear of God in me at the end of it. And I think that that fl flipping, this is just my speculation mm. and my lawyer's speculation, <laughs> that flipping <laughs> flipping the logo was it to, was to keep it one step away from me. Just, you know, it's, it's now it's facing the other way, not the way that I made it, the way they decided to, to use it. Yeah. And, it and it's been it's facing right it. ever since. Yeah, when it's like the facing left, it's your version. When it's facing right, it's midway now NetherRealm Studios. Well, in the K two on. Yeah. Yeah, crazy, huh? Yeah. Oh. Mm, there you go. Um, well, too, uh, when uh, when the game got big, when it got huge, um, mm -hmm. and, and it was okay. Here's the thing: they only made three hundred copies, the very first run. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't know if you knew that or not. Um, I knew that. Like, and um, it first came out October eighth, nineteen ninety two. Okay. Yeah. yeah. All right. <laughs> Here, I'm going to refer to you uh, for the for the actual time signatures on everything. I don't remember any of that crap. But, <laughs> but actually, I, I I do only because just recently someone mm -hmm. sent me a, a thing. You know, today's the day that I you know in nineteen ninety two that you know Mortal Kombat came out. 
I was like, oh, okay, that's cool. <laughs> I remember, I'll tell you the truth, I, I remember working on it in the summer. I remember just sweating, <laughs> sweating my balls off. <laughs> it was a hot, hot ass summer. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, a uh, so interesting side note. Uh, my very first Mortal Kombat um, event you know, mm -hmm. was arranged by uh, um, a Jeremy Fox uh, over at Prince Arcades and, and also Doc Mack over at Galloping Go uh, Ghost. And it was at uh, Hollywood Boulevard in Woodridge, ironically. And... Uh, oh, I remember when I, we got up on stage and they handed me a microphone and we answered some questions. And at the end of it, I, I said, oh, just kind of a funny little factoid. Um, I created the artwork for Mortal Kombat less than a mile from this very spot. I lived right here in Woodridge. I used to walk to this theater all the time. And there was like a big gasp. <gasps> And up from everybody, kind of scared me. I was like, "What the hell?" You know, what was that about? You know, um, but I didn't expect that. And then everybody, like, like they came later, and they said, "Really? He made the artwork for it, right? Yeah, just down the, you know, really across the highway and over down the road. <laughs> That's my house." Yeah. You know. So yeah. Uh, anyway, but the artwork you did, um, didn't you originally want to have like Goro instead of Johnny Cage in the dragon? Well, that wasn't my call. that wasn't my call. That that um that was just something that was thrown out there. They were like, "Hey, um, throw a, a Goro sketch together, and we'll see what 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 that what that was going." And I didn't know any what what the politics were going on mm -hmm. behind it all. You know, I'm a freelancer, so you know they call me up. I'm in my studio, so kind of a little bit disjoint. But but because of that, I had a very unique kind of a perspective of, of everything. Also, mm -hmm. um. You know, um, yeah, so I, again, it, it was kind of like a uh, need to know and you don't need to know. <laughs> so <laughs> shut up and just draw the Goro. And in, in the time it took me to do the sketch and drive over to, you know, them for the meeting, Goro had been, you know, a flush down the toilet and, and, and it was back to Johnny Cage again. And, I, and it wasn't until just recently that I found out a lot of that had to do with, uh, uh, negotiating with, with uh, uh, Jean Claude Van Damme and what a pain in the butt he was to work with. Okay. Yeah. But they couldn't get him to do anything, so that's when it, they decided to go with their own original game. Right, right, and 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 it was kind of a uh, an, an, an f you to Jean Claude Van Damme because they were kind of like you know you know Dan Pacina eh, he's looks enough like him and you know and and, and it's funny because the, the the johnny cage character that that uh uh, uh john for or first you know put on the side of it it was kind of modeled after jean-claude van damme it wasn't really yeah, meant to be frank dukes um um Bloodsport. yeah no yeah. You know. That's what they originally wanted to do, which is why it was originally going to be one of the original names was Kumite. Right, right. That was the original name, and and then it went to you know everybody was like the Hukuma <laughs> you know? and that is a marketing a huge marketing blunder. You know, yeah, that's great for anybody that studied you know the the martial arts in huge depth, which is like what three of you. <laughs> that's gonna be a, not a good idea to put that as your name. Uh, I, I, I get it. You're all like, that's so cool, so clever, and in, and in, in, you know, in yeah, uh, people, you know, depth. Uh, uh, yeah, some people would have problems pronouncing it. Well, first of all, they know what the hell is it, you know, and you've already at that point you've lost them. You know, I'm coming from a total, you know, my 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 experience, my background is in the ad agencies and marketing agencies of Michigan Avenue. You know, I got decades in there. So, you know, the first thing you're looking for is what's going to draw them in and what's going to hold them and Kubite or do it, you know. And so then Dragon Attack, it became Dragon Attack. And, and that was about as generic a, as a box of cornflakes could be, you know. So it wasn't until Mortal Kombat, really. I mean, that that's it's been asked so many times. Would it still be the same game? If if the whole thing were done as Dragon Attack and not Mortal Kombat, I I believe not. I don't think it would have been quite honestly. That's just my opinion. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Only 
Um, you can only go to an alternate universe and see if it actually did. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get in the old time machine and see what happens. <laughs> we'll do yeah. that again. Yeah. <laughs> in a parallel <laughs> universe dragon. where Dragon Attack exists. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting how that, that all came about, you know. Um, and the, like I said, there's, there's like three stories going around about uh, who came up with the K for the combat. Well, all of them are lies, of course. But <laughs> yeah, some say, Richie, some say John Vogel. Yeah, yeah, the, the, those are pretty much the ones I've I've heard too. You know, I know it wasn't me. <laughs> <laughs> so you know, well, that that's the funny thing is, is uh, that that uh, that initial meeting mm -hmm. uh, where I had, had that, um, and you've seen the piece probably on my Facebook page of the Dragon Attack artwork, um, and where I wrote, you know, in green marker, Mortal Combat, and changed the C to a K. Um, that was after being in a meeting for an hour talking about the game mm. and what they expected me to do. Mm -hmm. And at the end of it, my pen, my pen ran out of ink and, and, uh, uh, Ed Boone goes, Oh yeah, I forgot. It's going to call Mortal Kombat now. Well, there's something I should have been probably informed on at the beginning of this meeting an hour ago. You know, so I'm like, oh, look, I found a green marker. I just happened to go have a green marker like that. <laughs> That's planning now, isn't it, huh? Mm -hmm. So I just grabbed the green marker and wrote Mortal Kombat with a C because, of, you know, combat. Mm -hmm. and, and he looks over my shoulder. Yeah, he looks over my shoulder and he goes, with a K. You know, like, idiot. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Why, of course, with a K. What was I thinking? Of? So I made that big hard K. And, and then I realized, you know, it's a cursive. I'm going to go home and think it's like, you know, uppercase and lowercase, and I wrote Mortal Kombat in all caps, and you know, so, and then that became yeah. history. <laughs> Funny. Yeah. Did you also um, did you also style the font like for the title and stuff like that? Well, you saw like what what Dragon Attack was written in. Uh, we may, I mean, I, I made the style. Well, actually, I, I, I guess you could say John kind of came up with with the the. The style, more or less. I mean, you, you see, you can see from that artwork, it's pretty loose. It's real loose, you know. And, and that's why I was brought on. I mean, John was like five minutes out of, out of art school when the, when he came up with that. You know, awesome job, dude. But you know, he didn't have any experience doing any kind of production artwork at all. I don't think he'd done anything, you know, as what as far as production art. Uh, I had 10 years of experience at that point. So, you know, I, I was definitely the hands down the guy for the job. You know, I just walked in, you know, I, I really, I, at that point, I was like, what's the gig? You know, lay it out for me. Uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. Okay, see you on Thursday with sketches. That was it, you know, I, I was real, matter of fact, on job, you know, this is another day on job, man. Mm -hmm. um, so, the, who you know, I worked on five games that year. Uh, one of them was Time Killers, which uh, simultaneously, yeah, yeah, I worked on uh, simultaneously while I was working on on uh, Mortal Kombat. That's another big, you know, reveal that uh, nobody knew about. I kept that secret for ten long years. I didn't tell my wife because I was afraid I was going to get sued. Yeah, Time Killers is like with Mantas and like those characters. Mm hmm. Well, it's funny because. Um, both games took a similar approach to production in that part of it was going to be photo captured and animated from the photo capturing, and the other part of it was going to be electronically, you know, manufactured, uh, created. Uh, with Mortal Kombat, they created the backgrounds electronically and, and photo captured the characters you know, like, animated like, them. Time killers did the opposite. They use electronic to you know, electronic animation to create the characters fighting, and they photo, you know, or, or, or you know, uh, photo captured the backgrounds and animated that. And, and it was it was it was kind of interesting. I'm working on both games at the same time simultaneously. That that was the other thing. Um, I went to that initial meeting, mm. and two, two days later, I get a phone call from Incredible Technologies, who tell me, 
um, hey, we got a line on a secret, uh, you know, game that's going on over at, at uh, Midway called Dragon Attack. And, you know, I, and I've got it all over my studio. <laughs> I'm already working on it. And I'm like, do tell, a Dragon Attack. Hmm? You know, yeah, yeah, we want you to work on the, you know, on time, it's called Time Killers. And, you know, here, sign the NDA. Okay, so, you know. And uh, it's called Time Killers, and it's going to go up. We're, we're, you know, it's a fighting game, and we're creating this fighting game that's going up against it. And I'm like, really? I went, How interesting. You know, so I bring it home. Now I've got bo both games in my studio simultaneously, literally. i got one drawing table over here with, with Mortal Kombat. i got another drawing table over here with Time Killers. That was how it was going on, right? Mm -hmm. And, and um, the deadlines were so crazy to get it done because each one was bumping it up because they heard the other one was bumping it up. And, and it all came down to me bumping it up. Okay. <laughs> it was kind of ironic. You know, they'd call me up and go, we hear, you know, that, that they're really, you know, uh, you know, bumping up the deadlines over there at Midway. We got, we got to, you know, kick this in. Uh, and like, you know, like whoever's doing that artwork over there is really, really, you know, cranking it. Yeah, I'm doing the artwork over there. That's who's cranking it. You know, <laughs> I couldn't help but have like I just had to laugh when I'm having that conversation. Okay, yeah, yeah, that would be me, but I can't say that. I can't tell you that. You know, I ended up hiring a, a buddy of mine, another illustrator, to do artwork on um, uh, Time Killers to so help him with the, to help do the backgrounds on, on Time Killers. You know, to to get it done because the deadlines just got so crazy. It, it was an exercise in sleep deprivation. So. Pretty interesting. <laughs> so, I, I, days of being a parent. <laughs> right, right. Okay. So, so while that was all going on, um, uh, I was doing. I think I was doing my taxes, and I had uh, um, a, a, a meeting with my lawyer, and we we had lunch, and I'm telling him what's going on, and I'm kind of laughing about it, and he's going, "Shut up! Don't ever say that aloud ever again." And I said, well, I'm not breaking the non-disclosure agreement with either company. I'm not. It's just that I'm working on both things at the same time. I mean, I guess I have intimate knowledge of each one of them. But to what advantage is, is it? I, I don't see it. He goes, it doesn't matter what you see or what was the advantage or what's legal or not legal. You're here. Great. Great. Good for you. You're, you're perfectly right. And, 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 uh, you know, legal in doing what you're doing. They'll sue you anyway, and they'll lose and they don't care. Here's why they're going to make an example out of you. They will spend as much money as it takes to crush your sorry ass for doing what you did, even though it was legal and it's, fine to do so they'll make an example out of you to, to everybody else that wants to do what you just got done doing you better shut your mouth and keep this to yourself for a long long time and i did for 10 long years i never breathed a word of it not even to my wife i didn't even want her to even accidentally say it in a conversation after he scared the crap out of me on that on that level and even after the 10 years I was pretty selective about who I'm saying. It wasn't until recently when I'm doing shows now. I talked to my lawyer before I went and did shows, and she goes, nah, it's probably pretty <laughs> pretty safe to do it now. 27 years later, I don't think anybody gives a flying damn. But back then, that probably would have crushed me. So Yeah, because Midway is no more. It's not yeah. where the right goes. Well, true enough, but Warner Brothers owns it, and they're, and they're suing monkeys. You know? they, they're they sue happy. So... <laughs> Yeah, I still got to kind of watch that, and, and you know, uh, I mean, I talked to Dan Pacino about it, and, and he said, yeah, here, here's his opinion on it. Um, if they wanted to come after us, they'd crush us. You wouldn't have a prayer. You know, they're a mega corporation. They can spend as much money as they want on lawyers. They'll destroy you. But it's not in their best interest to, to come after us okay. because... Yeah, because we're the representatives of, of the brand now, like it or not, you right. know. So don't piss us off any more than you already have, which is a lot. Mm. Be, okay, here's what happened to me at, at the end of it all. Um, I started telling you before. Um, the game went big. I call up and i um, talking to Ed and... Uh, I said, hey, congratulations, this is amazing, this is so awesome, and I was just going crazy. I mean, at that point, I had been involved in, I worked on Tron, 
the original Tron. I worked on Tapper. I worked on three Pac-Man games. I worked on Satan Tunnel. I, I, the Wacko, Spy Hunter. I had a whole shitload of successes behind me long before I showed up to do Mortal Kombat. But nothing like this thing was blowing up. You know, this this is a whole new beastie. And I've been doing this 10 long years at that point, and this, this was something totally unique and new to me. I didn't see anything grow like that. And not only that, but now we've got a you know, a huge stink going on in Washington about, uh, you know, the uh, um, uh, uh, ratings, you know, they choosing ratings, you know, for, for uh, video games and, and, and that sort of thing. You know, they didn't even have a rating system. Now this is that spawned that whole thing and, and that conversation. I, I remember being contacted by lawyers from, from Midway saying, you might have to go to Washington and, and, and uh, you know, testify. It never happened. But still, I was like, what? This is this is being pretty crazy, you know. Okay, so now I call him up and I say, "It's awesome. This is so cool. You're going nuts." Uh, I was so proud to be part of the team. He just cuts me off. He goes, "You weren't part of the team." I'm like what? Yeah, you were just a hired gun. Uh, I can't believe I have to explain this to you that you're a hired gun. I, I, my, my feelings were a little hurt. It's like, you know, he goes, where did you think you were part of the team? I, I guess all the meetings with the rest of the team made me think that, mm. you know. Uh, so, I mean, I'm, I'm real literally, and it's a phone call, you know, so I'm, I'm literally without words and just kind of standing there. And uh, then he goes, well, I, I'm glad I got you on the phone. The legal department wants me to uh, inform you that they don't want you talking about Mortal Kombat or making associations with Mortal Kombat or showing you the artwork that you did for Mortal Kombat for a period of like 18 months starting, how about now? I'm like, you know what? Just be that way. Fine. Whatever. You know. Right, what do you say to that? What are you going to do? Oh, hey, screw you. Or what? I'm not going to burn a bridge. I didn't, you know, I'm a freelancer. You know, that that's the bottom line. Don't burn bridges. Stupid people bridges so yeah i didn't say anything i just kind of kept it to myself but i was bent i was not happy about the whole thing now in the big picture at the time i was making my real money doing uh, uh illustrations on michigan avenue for the ad agencies and it was huge money it it it, it, it made whatever i was making a you know like the whole video game thing at the time was a little, it was a side thing for me. It was like it was a side thing that was fun. It was I was fun to do those projects, and they yeah. and by doing that they sucked the fun out of it. You know, they they, they at the end it was kind of like here's your reward for doing for making probably the most I recognizable logo on the planet along with the, you know all the other artwork that and, and intellectual assets that go along with it. Here's your reward. We're not going to allow you to talk about it. You know, we're cutting you out of it. We're not even going to, you know, you're, you're, you're barely even acknowledged and only at the end of the game. And, and then they misspelled my name. Mm. It's, yeah, it's spelled N-E-I-M-E-Y. It's, it's N-I-E. You could have looked at my invoice to get the right spelling. I didn't even bother to do that. And it was 27 years before I even knew that. One of my one of my old cast members called me up and said, "Hey, you know your name's on the end of this Mortal Kombat? It is. 27 years. Okay. <laughs> and I, yeah, it's misspelled too. <laughs> it's like perfect. One last indignity, you know. So, uh, okay. So now, uh, back in 1992, I'm having this conversation where they don't allow, allow me to talk about it or show Mortal Kombat. At the time, my clients were Eminem Mars and Kellogg's. Big, you know, family-oriented, um, kids, you know. Quite honestly, showing Mortal Kombat to that group, group was maybe not, would have been a good idea. Especially since it was, you know, the, the center of so much controversy and, you know, a, a senatorial hearing you know, regarding violence and video games was going on in, in Washington while this is all going on, I, I almost was kind of like, maybe you're doing me a favor. Maybe I should distance myself from it for a while. And that's kind of how things went down. And then after everything was said and done, it wasn't hurting or, or helping my career one way or another. So kind of ironically, 
Um, I created what is arguably maybe the most recognizable logo on the planet, and I never once showed it in my book or even mentioned it until just recently. Mm. So, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's showbiz, baby. <laughs> well, I'm sorry, what was that? It broke up. I said... In this case, it would be the video game biz instead of show business. Right, right, yeah, yeah, same, same thing. <laughs> they're all, they're all kind of tied in, you know. <laughs> so, it's, it's video games are made into movies. Video games are made into comic books. Right, right, and vice versa. Comic books made into video games, and you know, I, I, I re- Captain America and the Avengers. Um, right, that was a comic book series. And they had an arcade game, and now they have movies. Yeah, right. Well, uh, way back in the day, we, we talked about it just recently on the podcast I did yesterday at uh, Gallop and Ghost uh, um, about how uh, uh, I had done the artwork on the first Transformers game, which actually never got made. I found out because I, I, I will try to look it up, and you know, <laughs> I guess it wasn't really the first Transformers game. It didn't get made. But the game was horrible. It had nothing to do with Transformers. It was just a basic video game where these robot-y characters uh, threw, threw stuff, and each one had a different power. And it, you know, it had nothing to do with Transformers. Yeah. Like, that's not uh, Optimus Prime. That's not um, Megatron. No, no, and that was the other thing too. Is is uh, when I was doing the artwork, I, I was asking for the characters, and they're going, "Oh, we want to shy away from, from." Uh, um, you know, illustrating a specific character like Optimus Prime, or and and I thought, how squirrely is this? this is, and I see why it didn't get made. You know, um, it was one of those again situations where I think my artwork might have been better than the game. <laughs> you know? We were discussing that yesterday with Midnight Marauders. You know, wow, beautiful. You know, uh, a doc Doc's telling me he goes beautiful cabinet work, Paul. And I go, yeah, too bad that game sucked ass. <laughs> And so it was so glitchy, you know, it kept fall, it kept you know breaking down and falling apart. It was terrible. It was terrible. Sometimes yeah, yeah. that happens again. That showbiz baby. <laughs> so anyway, I, I should you should ask questions. Uh, let's see. Yeah. <laughs> what caused you to not do the artwork for the other games like Mortal Kombat Two, Mortal Kombat Three, Ultimate Mortal Kombat? Oh, Kombat 3, oh, Mortal Kombat. good question. Um. That was that phone call. That's why I called after you know um, after Mortal Kombat One had done such gangbusters. You know, uh, um, I, I was like, "Yeah, baby!" I I was calling to to get some more work. I was fishing around for for more work. I, you know, my my contacts inside of Midway let me know that MK Two was in the works and. You know, you should get down here and, and be part of this. I, I, I was more than happy. I thought that's what was going to happen. I thought I'd make a phone call, then come on down, and we just start in where we left off. <laughs> Wrong. You're out of it, buddy, Mr. Freelancer. Here's the thing. They only made 300 games. Mm-hmm. They they let a guy who it, who was fresh out of art school and had no experience doing any kind of... Uh, you know, final artwork, they, they gave him a game. They didn't want to burden any of their, um, their, their, you know, uh, employees or artists in their, in their art department with doing this artwork. So they brought in a freelancer so they didn't have to take up any of their artists time. That was the mentality that went into the game. And then when the damn thing exploded and became huge, they were like, uh Oh, you know, we let a freelancer make the intellectual assets on a game that has become our cash cow. If he was an employee, we'd own it outright. But we don't own it outright because he's a freelancer. So now we got to threaten him and make sure we keep him under our thumb because otherwise things could get sticky. I had no intention, but, you know, I'm sure somebody from upstairs in the legal department said, you know, go over and lean on him. So we got to keep him under control. Mm. So there you go. That, that's that's why. I mean, not. Oh, and and also, oh, uh, during that conversation, Ed Ed said to me, um, 
these are ex his exact words, um, those assets will never be crossing the threshold ever again, meaning they're never going to go out the door ever again. So. They're going to be in shop rather than go to an outside source. Absolutely, yeah, bingo. Yeah. I was like, okay, I get it. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, uh, you know, it's 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 a ruthless world. <laughs> you know? yeah. Yeah. They screw you over royally. Oh yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I'm the only one. You know, now that I've talked to, you know, Dan Piscina and and uh, you know Richard Divizio and a bunch of other, you know, all those guys. You know, I, I talked to them and, and said they they got screwed over too. They all got you know at one point or another. Um, it's, I'm glad that I'm meeting them finally. I'm just now meeting them. I didn't know them back then. I, I wish I had. That would be great. But, yeah. yeah, like Liz Malecki. Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Great guys. I, I'm so glad that happened. Uh, in fact, I'm getting together with uh, Dan Piscina tomorrow night and, and uh, Tim Kitzrow from uh, NBA Jam. Yeah, I love that game. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's awesome. I, I, I was in uh, Portland uh, two weeks ago with him at, at the uh, uh, Port Portland Retro Gaming Expo. Just a fantastic show. Hope they have me back next year. I, I had a grand time. Um, but we were, we were hanging, I was hanging out with uh, Tim Kitzrow, and he's just more fun than, he's just nuts constantly. You know, he's, he's like being with Robin Williams. Really? He's just always on, you know, and, and always the voices. You know, it's like, from downtown, you know. Oh, my God, he's hilarious. <laughs> Yeah, right, right, right. You know, my, my side hurt from, from just hanging out with him. He was laughing so hard. He was nuts. Um, so, he should be copyrighted that, um, for trademark or copyrighted that phrase, boom, chakalaka. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. So you, no, that's good. Did you, did you get it or? No, it's probably a telemarketer. Oh. <laughs> yeah, definitely. <laughs> Uh, this one pharmaceutical company from that has been working on drugs for the past twenty years, and we will give you a, a discount <laughs> for hundred dollars. You don't pay shipping or anything. Yeah. <laughs> I always get the ones are uh, you know, um, an IRS agent is coming to your house immediately. You will be arrested for the back pay taxes you have not paid. Oh yeah, that's very believable. What? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. Where's your proof? Yeah, yeah. Well, I always play along. Oh, oh no! Whatever will I do? How can I? How can I fix this? Oh well, you must go get a, a card over at the, you know, at the Myers. <laughs> that's whoa! That sounds like an official way to do. That. <laughs> Too funny, God! But it yeah. must work. People. You know, they, they keep doing it. I mean, mm -hmm. I, it, it seems like I'll get one of those, like three or four of those calls in a day, and then all of a sudden nothing from it. You know, so so I, I can only hope to think it must work because they they keep doing it, and people, you know, <laughs> people must be falling for it. That's sad. Uh, mm -hmm. So, what, what else would you like to know? What would you like to know about uh, Mortal Kombat? Not to say, like, um, I don't know. What do you think of the art direction that the game's been going through, like over the past twenty plus years? Oh, okay. That that's a great question. Um, and, and I have to be honest. Um, I, I kind of fell away from it for a long time, and it wasn't until uh, um, you know, Mortal Kombat X Ten, you know, showed up and uh, kind of got to grasp my attention again. Um. Yeah, I, I I've been playing, kind of playing catch up. Um, to be honest, I, I I've been watching you know Mortal Kombat videos on YouTube just to kind of catch up on the storyline and see where the you know fans are. You know when I when I go to conventions, the fans are going to want to come over and talk. They want to talk the talk. So I need to know <laughs> what I'm talking about. <laughs> Otherwise, uh, you know, the, the illusion is destroyed. <laughs> so, um, but it's interesting. It's, it, for, it's fun for me because I'm kind of binge watching, uh, you know, all the videos. And, you know, I'm seeing that, you know, the, uh, there's, there's an old 
Johnny Cage or, or, or Johnny Cage and, and a new Johnny or, and, a, and a young Johnny Cage all existing in the same universe. <laughs> what the hell, man? What happened there? You know, some nutty stuff, you know. <laughs> and... So, um, I was asked about the logo, the new, you know, for uh, uh, the movie and, and uh, um, what I thought of, you know, uh, in, in um, a couple of years. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't have a problem with that. No, let's, let's face it, the franchise is too big to fail. Mm. I, I think, you know, you could change the logo, as long as you didn't stray too far from it, and they didn't. You know, they, they, they kept pretty true to, to the ori origins of it, and, you know, I don't have a problem with that. It's Somebody has fun, cares. <laughs> it also kind of looks like the um, Alien Queen embryo for what they did for the poster work for alien three good point uh in fact that's funny you should say that because i thought that too and i was wondering if anybody else said now that you're saying it i'm thinking hmm yeah i did think that uh at the time i didn't i didn't, I didn't say that when somebody asked me in portland that very same question i didn't say anything about alien three but i did think that when i saw it i was like hmm this but it's I don't, it's not close enough to you know Mm -hmm. Like have Disney come down and rain. Um, right. Yeah, their lawyers got better things yeah. to do about. But... <laughs> <laughs> or not? Who knows? <laughs> yeah. Uh, they smell... Twentieth Century Fox. Yeah, they smell money. Yeah. Mm -hmm. mm. <laughs> money. <laughs> Let's go after that. We have no grounds. Who cares, really? It's law. You don't have grounds. You just have their money. That's all. <laughs> too far yeah. so yeah, yeah. um what in, um inspirations did you uh, draw from when doing the artwork um i don't know really uh i, I mean at the time i was uh, uh i was really in a Kind of in, in uh, engrossed in, in reading a lot of comic books, a lot of comic, and, and uh, I had uh, certain comics I was following. Um, I forget at the time, but I followed a lot of different different uh, storylines, and I can't remember when which ones began and which one ended. Um, I, I was a huge fan of Sandman. I don't know if, if the Neil Gaiman. Oh uh, yeah, fantastic! I, I just love that. Um, so I, I'd say maybe that was a little bit of an influence, you know, with, with, with some of the stuff, um, that it was very graphic. I mean, if you, you look at the, at that, that first game, um, it was a very interesting way to go about doing, uh, the artwork. I had never actually airbrushed, um, a color screen, uh, before this, mainly because they didn't want to do halftones. It, it was a big pain in the butt, you know, uh, eight years before when I, when I worked there from 82 to 84, you know, they, they didn't want to, it was another charge and they didn't want to cough it up. So they're just like, just find some way to, to do it without having to use a half tone. But, um, when we, we were doing this, it was kind of funny because, uh, um, they're, they're approaching the. The game in a very innovative style, and now we're doing the artwork on the cabinet in a very innovative style too. We're airbrushing the color screens, you know, one on top of another one for the side art, uh, and it, and that was all done at half scale. Mm -hmm. so, so it had to be pretty tight because it's, it's blown up two hundred percent, you know, to be on the side of this cabinet. And and not only that, but it's taking up the entire side of the cabinet now. It's not just a you know a placement or a you know. Uh, an insert or a violator it's it's taking up the entire cabinet that that's a that's a lot going on so it, it had to be pretty tight it had to be you know together but um, yeah. i'd say i'd say comic books probably at the at the time yeah definitely yeah did you see those um that mini um version of the original mortal kombat game where it has like the original side art for the cabinet only instead of it having Johnny Cage, it had an Ultimate Mortal Kombat 3 style Scorpion. You mean this 
Yeah. <laughs> and my son just bought this for me. This is, he's going, Dad, this is so cool. I saw this. I know. <laughs> yeah, this is that's pretty cool. I know. Even my wife was like, you did this? She's clueless. She has no idea. <laughs> which, which is maybe good. You know, because... Um, you know, I'll I'll show her. People will send me texts that'll let's say uh, um, your artwork defined a generation, or uh, uh, like I just got this plaque, and, and and it says you know you're an industry legend, and so she, she's like aha. Uh-huh. Listen, when you're done being an industry legend, could you take the garbage out because it's really stinking. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you know that, 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 that's how that's how impressed she is with all of this. <laughs> ah ha! She's like <laughs> rolling her eyes. Ah ha! Whatever, you know. <laughs> She's a tough sell, man. <laughs> when you're done being an industry legend, can you go and watch the dogs? Yeah, right, right. You know, <laughs> smash a bug. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah, so so much for the fantasy of uh, you know fame and fortune, huh? <laughs> so you know, but, yeah. Basically, I'm a fr- I'm a freelancer myself. Sure. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Like, and stuff like that. Yeah. Okay. Oh. Do you like video games or? Uh, I don't work on video games. No. Um, I do like regular like wildlife photography, and I also go to conventions, take photos of that. Okay. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Uh, I used to uh, actually, I used to own uh, um, Eagle Games, or as one of the owners of, of Eagle Games. I mean, we made uh, board games for from two thousand to two thousand five. Did a lot of board games, a lot of them. Um, we we won a couple of awards. We got you know we worked on Sid Meier's uh, Civilization and. Uh, um, I did the artwork on uh, um, uh, Railroad Tycoon. You know, so, I mean, we had some big games. You know, we had some, some pretty decent names. We, we did pretty well. Uh, sold the company in 2005 to Griffin Games, and now, and now it's Eagle Griffin. So, yeah. Mm-hmm. I've been um, interested in photography ever since my late Uncle Bobby. Um, he um, used to be a high-speed photographer for this one racetrack in upstate New York called oh. Lebanon Valley Speedway. Uh-huh. Oh, nice. When I was a kid on how to be a good photographer. Uh-huh. Like, you need to have a good camera, good eye, and a quick shutter finger. Yeah. And tons of patience, especially yeah. when it comes to photography. Well, yeah, right. And, 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 and you were shooting racing you know mm-hmm. how tough is that i mean the cars are you know they're flying you know yeah. so yeah yeah tough 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 shooting you probably learned a lot of tricks pretty pretty fast uh, being around him that, that'd be cool that must have been cool yeah. That's awesome. uh, yeah i never did um high speed photography i only do wildlife or do events and stuff like that i've never done a wedding though no, no. Well, it's, you know, it, it's like art. It, it, you start specializing. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, like, like, okay, during the holiday season, I find myself uh, doing a lot of uh, pencil portraits and and home portraits and pet portraits. It's great money, you know. It's just, I, I'm good at them and fast, but, but it's a completely different, totally different thing than the rest of the stuff I do, you know. Yeah, um, I, I work for a lot of uh, uh, ad agencies, and I can't show any of that stuff. I, I'm like, there's tons and tons of artwork that I, I've done that I just cannot show because, uh, you know, most most. What's that? Property laws. Um, just just non disclosure agreement stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, like. Most of the stuff that I do for the ad agencies is designing things, you know, a lot of, and, and most of the time that's going to be in, in some sort of a proposal to a corporation or whoever their client is. And uh, so it, it, 
it's pending for a long time. They, they may see it and go, we don't want to do that this year, but we may want to build that next year. So we don't want the, the artists putting the stuff out on the internet. And Oh, great. Really? You showed all the stuff that we're planning on, on hitting the market with next year. And there's a lawsuit. So yeah. just keep it to yourself. Just, it's just smart. Yeah. Unfortunately. You know, I'd love to show that stuff, man. That's some crazy. I, I, that's great stuff. It's fun stuff, and I'm doing nutty stuff, and it pays well. Holy crap, it pays great. You know, that that, that stuff's you know seventy seventy five dollars an hour. Mm. Yeah, yeah, and they don't care how long it takes. They're usually very rarely. They were they always tell you, you know, well keep track of your hours. But I've never once had anybody, you know complain about the hours I build, not once, in 35 years. You know, not for the, the big agencies, anyway. You know? mm -hmm. So, yeah. Any the characters um, for the games? For uh, Mortal Kombat, or? Yeah. No, I, I, I didn't. In fact, um, they had to send me a couple of uh, um, uh, screenshots of Goro to, to you know to do that drawing that I did uh, that or that one sketch you know that when we when we uh, uh, briefly played around with the idea of him being on the side of, of the cabinet um, <clears throat> but no I had nothing to do with with any of the characters um, in, in fact um, I didn't even put Johnny Cage on the side I did ev all the artwork on the on the cabinet except for Johnny Cage, and and actually that was done by Jack Hager. Um, and that that was a uh, a a photo art composition that that he he put together, and 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 that was superimposed over my artwork after they got it. So, uh, other than it existing in the original um, sketches and and the rough drawings that John Tobias had done. Um, I had no idea what was showing up on the cabinet. All I know is I did that dragon with the logo, and and there was that that space that was going to be filled by something Johnny Cage, as it turned out. Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah. You did like, the marquee sign. That was the first thing that was done. That that was the very because everything has has to come off of the logo. That was always the the standard procedure when doing those games. Was the header was the most important piece of artwork you could have put on that game? Because it's marketing and it's selling the product. And it's above everybody's head. It, when you're in, when you're in the in, in an arcade and you're looking around, you know most people's heads are just below the marquee. That was by design so that you could see it. You know, and I've been told by plenty of uh, uh, fans that when they went to the arcade, they would look for that artwork like a beacon. You know, that was their it, like a moth to a flame. You know, I, to use that. <laughs> I thought that was a pretty good word actually, like a beacon. You know, like it was just you know drawing them right in, and, and but, but that because that's exactly how important you know that artwork is. It, it, it's it that's a make or break you know but whether that artwork's going to work or not or and make that game that is the make or break right there the rest of it can be just crap you know beautiful or crap it doesn't really matter if the header is is not making it it's all for nothing yeah i actually have a, a miniature magnet of that in my oh. room yeah cool cool uh if you can wait a few i can go grab it Oh, sure. Yeah. I'll be right back.
And I might have to turn on the light. And I also have this. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh, my God. That's amazing. That's so cool. Where'd you get that? <laughs> I actually won this as a prize for winning a game of Mortal Kombat trivia. No kidding. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. That is so cool. That's also how I got won this. Oh, nice. Yeah. That is so cool, so cool. So, so yeah. See the dragon in the in the little yellow bar at the bottom there, facing left. Yeah. <laughs> it was the last time too. <laughs> yeah. And it's also um, on the um, select your fighter screen. It's also facing left, if I'm not mistaken. Mm -hmm. Come on, let's take a look. Yep. Right, right, right. There you go. There you go. That's awesome. How fun is that? That's yeah. crazy. <laughs> well, I wish I had a piece of all the marketing stuff. That that'd be something in itself. So mm -hmm. fun. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. I'm actually thinking about getting like a like the marquee art for like all the arcade versions of the Mortal Kombat games. And then make like a kind of like a collage type plaque and like hang it up on my wall. That would be cool. Backlight it. I well, have all the marquees, all all the headers from uh, each of the games. That would be that would be pretty cool. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That. that, that what, what was the last arcade? Go Probably three, right? No, Mortal Kombat Four was the last arcade was game. The arcade game. Okay. All right. Yeah. And then after that, it was just all you know, uh, home video and yeah, yeah. crazy. Crazy evolution that it all went through. Yeah. Yeah, yeah we've seen the evolution of video games. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like yesterday we were... we're I'm, I just marvel that we're still talking about all this stuff. You know, 27 years later, we're still having, you know, discussions about what happened and how it came to be and, you know, where it's going. And, what, holy crap, you know, it's a kind of life of its own. I mean, rather quickly too. It didn't take very much. It's, it's been like that for a long time. Yeah. So, yeah. The internet too. Oh, that made it explode. You know, I mean, really, everything that's happened to me has happened since April of this year, when I wandered on into Galloping Ghost Arcade, and and uh, you know, Doc Mac kind of almost sat me down and and explained why it was important, why. My artwork was important. Why I I'm important was important for me to get out and meet fans, and that I have fans, and that they they want to talk to me and they hear these stories. I mean, he almost had to literally kind of hold me by the hand and go, "Look, dude, you're you're not you're not getting this. There's a lot of people out there that want to talk to you and hear your stories and and know what happened and and hear what you have to say. And now I'm finding out that's true, and, and that's a cool thing. That's really cool. Some people are fans of game, the games because of the artwork and how it was designed and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, I'm There's flattered. A little man that um, was a freelancer that um, gets huge recognition from those types of fans. Yeah, yeah. And, and that's the thing is, is kind of being out of the loop, you know, for so very long, and then everybody's kind of like, uh, you know, hey, wait a minute, where have you been? What? what I wasn't anywhere, just kind of not really part of it. You know, and I gotta say, for many years, like if I'd go to, you know, a Comic Con or something, and, and I'd see the guys from Mortal Kombat up there, and everybody's, you know, patting them on the back, and you know, telling them what a great job they're doing, and mm -hmm. part of me was kind of like, why, why aren't I up there? Why, why you know? And, and like, yeah, I mean, I, they go to the stars and not the people that work behind the scenes and stuff like that, like behind yeah, the camera or right, behind right. the pen in this case. Right, right. Uh, you know, and I wasn't the only one. I think maybe that's probably why I was so, um, maybe it was so easy to just kind of write it off like it was nothing because I knew I wasn't the only one. You know, there were a lot of people that were getting. You know, no recognition. They worked hard on stuff, and I, I knew a lot of them. <laughs> you know? 
So it was kind of like, yeah, it's not like I'm unique in this. And, and I think that was easy to kind of just blow it off and move on. You know, I wasn't happy about it, but well, I, at that point, I was like, what am I going to do about it? Nothing. You know? So do something about it now. But but it's nice. I, I'm, I'm glad it, it it's something that kind of just happened. Mm-hmm. Uh, it wasn't like I pursued it. It, it, it kind of happened to me. So I, I feel better about that, that the, the, the video game community has kind of opened their arms to me and, and said, dude, you know, come on in. You know, you're, you're, part, you're one of us. You've always been one of us. Why, you know, where have you been? Mm-hmm. You know, so that's a cool thing. It's a cool thing. Well, like finding your tribe, you know. Mm-hmm. And that's why I'm doing this documentary to show all versions of like, um, like all um, vantage points of like how video game was made and how it caused the impact that it did. Yeah. Like, uh-huh. mm-hmm. Yeah, and the the impact of it is is still registering with me. You know, we had that conversation of, briefly yesterday too in the podcast. And, uh, you know, it, um, it just blows me away how 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 widespread it all is, and and uh, especially at the shows when the fans come up and and want to talk to me, and and they've got all these stories. Um, you know, a common story I hear that has different variations to it, but but basically, uh, the story is. Um, somebody will say, uh, I and my brother were in an abusive relationship with our, you know, our parents were abusive to us or whatever it is, there were, or there was a bad situation at home or maybe, they, you know, whatever, whatever they were, they were in bad situations. Mortal Kombat was their way of getting the aggression out that, you know, it was all right. You know, um, also, it was it was a place to escape into a world that wasn't their crappy world, you know. Escapism. Right, right. Escapism, exactly. And uh, you know, I, I'd hear people tell me, you know, I and my brother would play this, and you know, that was our way of getting past our problems and everything. And now my brother's gone, and I, I, you know, I, I play with him as. You know, in, you know, as a memorial to him, and I'm like, oh my god! This, and he, and you know, they're telling me, you know, your artwork was the, you know, the saving grace on the whole thing, and we, you know, was our beacon, and we, you know, be drawn to it, and thank you for doing it. You, you know, you have no idea how you changed our lives. And I had no idea. I had, I had no concept. This is what was really happening. That's just amazing. Just amazing that all that was going down. You know, and my artwork was at the at the the forefront of it. Mm-hmm. That's the dream of every artist. Yeah. You know, to receive the recognition for your work. Well, you know, and uh, not even so much the recognition, which is good. Don't get me wrong, because I'm I'm li- I'm loving that. You know, it took long enough. Twenty seven years I waited, so yeah, I am happy with that. But more than anything, uh, it it's the uh, the satisfaction and the joy that it's brought to everybody far more far more rewarding than to you know to get the recognition mm-hmm. uh, to see everybody to make people happy mm-hmm. to make so many people happy on such a huge large scale man that to me that's success I'm finally yeah. successful you know Success is not based on um, how much money you make, but how many lives you've touched. Yeah, yeah, money, money's shit. You yeah, know? money printed every day. It's a common thing, but to receive praise and recognition and yeah, I'm just happy. Many lo- people, that's um, not that common. No, Some- no, I mean. Traditionally, the, the the creatives always get screwed, <laughs> you know. Wh- whoever it was that, ca- regardless of what it is, very rarely are the the artists and the creative guys getting the money for what they did. Some middleman is is raking in the cash for whatever you know creative thing the artist came up with. 
and unfortunately that 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 goes back thousands of years. That's always been that way, you know. Very rarely did the artist get get paid, you know, or or make, make a, a decent amount of money off it. Very rarely. I mean, there's a case, but very rarely. Let's face it. Yeah, the first time I saw the Mortal Kombat one arcade cabinet and stuff like that was right. when I went to this one um, theme park in Montreal, Canada. Mm-hmm. There, on vacation with my family, and I saw it, and I was like, "This is going to be a big game. This is going to be a big franchise." And I was hooked on, and, and so, so, so many extremes. Um, like I was actually grounded from it for a few years because I was so obsessed with it. Like, <laughs> Well, thank you, man. <laughs> I, as it turns out, I was too. <laughs> <laughs> you can't talk about it. You can't show your. Ah, oh, damn it, man. <laughs> we were both grounded. <laughs> <laughs> man, I'm gonna go pout. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna go to my friend's house and play it. Mm. <laughs> 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 I'll go to my friend's house and show him my artwork. <laughs> Ground me, huh? <laughs> That's too funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that, that was the other thing, too, is uh, um, everybody thinking that, you know, that art or that the game was going to turn them into assassins, you know, when it, it, it turns out the opposite happened. Um, people that played those games tend to be less violent less, and, you know, more, more even tempered because they got their all, they got all their shit out in the game. That's why. You know? And they were able to get that aggression out of their system. Right, yeah. I, I want to go kick somebody's ass, but I'd rather just kick, you know, Sub Zero's ass instead. You know? <laughs> so, yeah. If, uh, I would do this in real life. I could get arrested. Yeah, right, exactly. They, they kind of frown on you pulling people's spinal cords out. <laughs> we don't like that. Don't, don't do it again. Okay. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, I gotta get going. It was nice talking to you, and thanks for the um, awesome. interview. Oh, thank you, man. Uh, I enjoyed it. Thank you very much. Take care. Have a great day. Thanks, you too. Hold on. Let me stop the recording.